Here we are with our trigonometry test review. So, these first ones were just finding the exact value of the trig function. So to do that, we need our table, right, or that unit circle, okay? Unit circle had all the information there we needed for those different angles and whatnot, which we made into a table. And then we simply look up what it is in degrees or radians um, and deal with it. And then remember when we're given these reciprocal trig functions, we just flip it around. So um, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So let's find the sine of 135. So you pull this out. If you don't have this, you probably want to copy it somehow. We go to 135, right? So right here. So the sine is square root of 2 over 2. So the cosecant will be the inverse of that. So I'd have 2 over square root of 2, but we can't leave it like that. So we times by the square root of 2 on both sides, or top and bottom, I guess, not both sides. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is like square root of 4, so it's just 2. 2 times the square root of 2. Then we simplify the 2's, they become 1, so we're left with square root of 2. Okay, number 2, secant, is the opposite of cosine, the reciprocal, so of 0 degrees. So go to 0 degrees, cosine is 1. Okay, so what would the, you know, 1 over 1 reduced would be 1 over 1. So secant is 1. Okay, sine of 180, that one's easy. We just go to 180, find the sine, and it's 0. Okay, now, with the radians, same idea, cosine of 2 pi thirds. So where's 2 pi thirds? It's right here. Cosine is negative 1 half. So equals negative 1 half. Tangent of 3 pi halves. Where's 3 pi halves? Right here. Tangent is undefined, right? Because tangent, remember, is the y over x. y is sine. x is cosine. Cosine of 0 would have 0 on the bottom. Can't work. So it's undefined. Okay, now the cotangent of pi fourths. So cotangent is opposite tangent. So the tangent of pi fourths is right here at 45. Okay, so tangent is 1. Okay. So would that one work well? Same way. Tangent would be 1 over 1, so cotangent, flip that, would still be 1. And that's really all we needed that for. So, you know, looking at that, you want to have some notes of that because there's some easy questions to get just by knowing that information. Okay, plus if you ever need to, you know, these main pieces determine the radians or the degrees, you have that. All right, now kind of a little flashback of law of sines and cosines. Okay, so remember those right here, right? Law of sines and cosines here. So let's kind of scooch some things around. Okay, so on number seven, we're looking for the measure of angle A. So angle A is right there. So in order to use the law of sines, we need to have a connection, okay, between a side and an angle opposite. Well, this b and little b, okay, we've got a connection there, so we can use our little a to find that one. And that's all we need is a measure of a. So I'd use this. So the sine of a, which we don't know, over 21 feet is equal to the sine of 84 degrees over 22. So to solve this one, we multiply by 21 on both sides. Those cancel. I'm left with sine of angle A equals sine of 84 over 22 times 21. And then we just type that into our calculator, right? So we get out our calculator, and we go... 
So I type that in, and that gives me a decimal. Okay, my it ends up being like point nine four nine three one six three five four six seven. So really big. So I'm going to use a calculator to put that in place because to find the angle, we use that inverse sign of that whole guy to get out what our angle is. And that will tell us what the measure of angle A is going to be. Now, the thing you have to remember when you're doing using your calculator is that if you're doing degrees, okay, you've got to be in degree mode. If you're using radians, you've got to be in ra radian mode. Okay. Now, do they want round your answers to the nearest tenth? Okay, that's what I need to know. So we get that once we type that in. This goes into this place. I get angle A equals 71.68, so 71.7 degrees is my answer. Okay, and there's law of sines. Now, to find the law of cosines, or to use the law of cosines, so you notice we don't have an angle or a side opposite, okay? But we do have an angle in two other sides. So we can use the law of cosines. And we want to find this side, side B. Or actually, I guess it would be side A, but BC. So to find that, I am going to use this. So I go A squared, because what we're looking for is equal to B. B would be 24 squared plus C, C would be 25 squared, minus 2 times B times C times the cosine of 98 degrees. Now I can basically just type this into my calculator. Um, you know, honestly, just the way it is, if we didn't want to have to go through the process. If not, I have 576 plus 625 minus, now all of these go together, so 2 times 24 times 25, I like to kind of simplify it that way, times the cosine of 98. So 576, 576 plus 625, if I'm simplifying. So we get a squared equals 1201 minus 100 cosine of 98. Now, remember, order of operations, I can't subtract those yet. Okay, So I just basically need to type that in. And I get a squared equals 1201. So I type it into my calculator. Cosine of 98 degrees. And we get... 1368.00772115. Now, the last step is just simply taking that square root of both sides. So, once again, using my calculator, I'll just go square root of answer, use that previous answer to get what A is. And then I can round it to the nearest. So, second square root of that answer. And we get 36.9865. So basically, if we round 37 centimeters. So there's our law of sines and law of cosines. If you don't have those, make sure you have those written down to help out too. There'll be two similar questions. Okay, all the same format. All right, now we're looking at trig graphing. But first, we're kind of going easy, just looking for amplitude, period, and vertical shift. Okay. So we're just kind of picking it apart, and those are the three things we use to actually graph later on, right? So remember, whether it's sine or cosine, the amplitude is simply that number multiplied by the front, okay? That's our amplitude. So number 9, 6 times cosine, amplitude is 6. Negative 2 plus 4 times, it's always the multiply, amplitude is 4. 5 times the sine, amplitude is 5. 9 times the sine, amplitude is 9. Okay? Easy peasy. Now, the other easy one is a vertical shift down here. Okay? So vertical shift is the K, right? That midline, that vertical shift, that's the K. So it's just added or subtracted on. So we're adding 4, so K equals 4. Subtracting 2, so K equals negative 2. 
Now the period is a bit trickier, isn't it? Okay, there's a little bit more we have to do for it. So, the number multiplied by x is b. To get the period, we take 2 pi and we divide it by b. Now, if we want the frequency, we flip it, but we don't care about the frequency. We want the period. So, when we look at our problem, so b here is 4. Okay? Pi, or theta over 2, b would be 1 half. Down here with the signs, b would be 4, but that's not my answer. That would be like 1 third, so b would be 1 third. Okay, that's not my answer. In order to get my answer, you've got to do some work. So 4, I'd go 2 pi over 4. Then simplify. 2 over 4 is really 1 half, so pi over 2. So my period is crunched down. Remember, the normal period is 2 pi crunched down to pi over 2. Let's cut and do a fourth, basically. Okay, 15, same idea. Same exact idea. 2 pi over 4 reduces to pi halves, right? Oh, I guess we wanted degrees in the top, didn't we? So pi halves is 90 degrees. Sorry, I always think of it this way. So if you're doing degrees, 360 divided by 4. So for 14, it's 1 half. So 360 divided by 1 half, which is basically the same as saying 360 times 2, which gives us 720. If you were doing that in radians, 2 pi divided by 1 half, that would equal 4 pi two times around the circle, which is the same as both. For the sine, same idea, except with pi. 2 pi divided by 1 third, which really, whatever number you're dividing by, just do the opposite, multiply. This is multiplied, do the opposite, divide. So it's really because, and it works this way, 2 pi divided by 1 third. We can't divide, so we times by the reciprocal. The reciprocal is 3 over 1, or just 3, so 2 pi times 3 gives us 6 pi. So that one's been stretched out three times. All right, so there's those. And those are the three pieces of information you need to graph, okay, based off of the parent graph. And remember, when we're dealing with the unit circle, okay, the sign is the y value on the unit circle, but that point is used as our y value on the sine and on the cosine. The cosine is really the x value, but we still use the y value because the x value in the graphing is either the is the angle. And there's five points we use. We use 0, pi halves or 90 degrees, pi or 180 degrees, 3 pi halves or 70 270 degrees, and 2 pi or 360 degrees. So when we're talking about our parent graphs, those are the ones we're using. 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. Okay, we were to make a table here, right? For whether it's the cosine or the sine. So the sine is the y values. Okay, so the y values here on the coordinate plane is 0, then 1, then back to 0 then negative 1, then back to 0. So it has that pattern. 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Okay, that's for the sign, according to the degree. So when we're graphing it, okay, because one period is 2 pi, that's kind of our standard graph. We start at 0, we end at 0, and in the middle, right, pi, 2 pi, and 0. Then at pi halves, we go up to 1. And at 3 pi halves, we go down to negative 1. And that makes our parent graph for sine. Okay one period of our parent graph. And those are five points, or the major five points. And the way to think about it with sine is the 0, pi, and 2, pi are always on the midline. So if we shift that midline, 
we shift all three of those up or all three of them down. Okay. Now, if our period changes, that's going to affect them. It's either going to shift them in to squish them or shift them out to elongate them. Okay. And so it doesn't affect that first one. That first one's always going to stay there. Okay. Then lastly, the amplitude, that affects how high up we go, how far down we go. And we always start on a regular sign, we always start by going up and then down. If it's a negative sign, then we would flip-flop them and it would go down like that. Okay, and those are the three things you need to know. So on the parent graph, the amplitude is 1, k is 0, period is 2 pi. So as we adjust those, that's what's going to adjust our graph. Now for the cosine, it works basically the same way. Okay, it's just, it's a little different because the cosine is dealing with the x values. So the cosine of theta, if we go back up here, the cosine here is 1, then it's 0, then negative 1, then 0, then back to 1. So it's 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Okay, that's the pattern for cosine. So if we're looking at cosine, this time we start out at the amplitude of 1, there's negative 1, a 0, right? And we end at 2 pi up here at 1. Okay, in the middle at pi, we're down to negative 1, and then halfway between that at pi halves and 3 pi halves, we are at the midline at zero, and it looks like this, okay? So here, notice on a midline, so as k changes, because k is normally zero, as k changes for cosine, those are gonna move up or down. As the period changes, the normal period is two pi, but as that changes, it's gonna shift everything in or out, which for the sine, it'll shift all of the points. Okay, and that first and last being at the same place helps. So the amplitude affects, normally it's one, but that affects where we start and end, either above or below, depending on where that is and where our midline goes. Okay, so it's just using the parent graph, knowing these aspects of the parent graph, and then how, as we put things in here, how that's going to change, okay, how the amplitude affects it makes the peaks go higher, troughs go lower. Tells us where to start out higher, because that's still the A, and where the middle is lower. Okay, the K shifts everything, that midline here, up or down. Shifts everything up or down. And the B, once we go 2 pi divided by B, and figure that out, either compresses it or expands it. Compresses it or expands it. Okay, so let's take a look at how we do that. All right, so to start off, we're dealing with degrees, and we need to figure out our amplitude, our period, and our midline, our vertical shift. So we've got a plus one, that's our K. We've got a times one half, that's our amplitude. Our period, no number here, so two pi. So our parent graph would look like this for sine. You don't have to draw the parent graph, but it's a good idea to compare. Okay, So using those same five points, I didn't change my... Well, my K jumped up one, so my midline jumped up one. So I'm going to start there at one. My period is 2, two pi, so I end on that line. And in between, a 180, that's the same. Now my amplitude is going to affect how high we go for 90 and 270. So I go up a half, and I go down a half. And there's a one period of my new graph. A bit shallower and bumped up. And 20, I've got 4 here, so my A is 4, my amplitude is going up 4. Nothing there, so my period is 2 pi. And then plus 2, so my K is 2. So 
my parent graph for cosine, we start out up high at 1. At 90, we hit the midline. 180, we go down 1. 270, we hit the midline. And 360, we end. Okay. So mine, how does that change? Well, my k is going up 2. So I go up 2. Okay. Now my period's the same, so I know that this point and this point are going to be on my midline still. They're not affected by the amplitude. But my amplitude will affect where my start, end, and middle go. So my start, starting here at the midline, we're going to go up for 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, at the end, we're going to go up for 1, 2, 3, 4. And in the middle, we go down for 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's where my points go. So up here, up here, and then down here right there. So then it'll look like that. There's my new graph. All right, now let's do it with radians. Same idea. Uh, my amplitude is 4, nothing for b, so my period is 2 pi. Minus 1, so my k is negative 1. So my midline jumps down to negative 1. I start on my midline, I also end on my midline. My period's 2 pi, so I start at 0, end at 2 pi. And halfway between for sine is a pi. My amplitude takes it up 4 and down 4, so in between that at pi halves, I go up 2, and at 3 pi halves, I go down 2. Ah, crap, 4. Up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 4. And there's our same graph. Okay. 22. Okay. Nothing there, so my amplitude is 1. My period is still 2 pi. And plus 1, so my k is 1. So we jump up 1. There's my midline. With sine, we start at our midline. We end at our midline, where our period tells us to end, which was 2 pi. And in between that, we stay on the midline. Then because it's not negative at pi halves, I go up 1, because that's where my amplitude is. 3 pi, I go down 1. So this is the parent graph just basically shifted up 1, right? So there's those two graphs. If I really wanted to, I could, you know, keep trying to go, but I don't have to. Just one period is all we need. All right, now cosine. Same idea, except this time, oh, one cosine, one sine. This time we're just dealing with our period. Nothing out here, no plus here, so k is still at 0, and my amplitude is still 1. So my parent graph, we start at 0, 0, oh, crap. Cosine, we start at 1, 0. Pi halves, we go down to the midline. Pi, we go down 1. 3 pi halves, we go back to our midline. 2 pi, we go here. So they just, my graph kind of stretched it out, didn't it? So there's my parent graph. Now, our a is still the same. Our k is still the same. So the only difference is our p. We have a b of 3, but that's not our period. So I go 2 pi divided by 3, which doesn't simplify, so my period is 2 pi thirds. So I still start on the y-axis at 1. Start at the same place because I didn't move up, and my amplitude didn't change. But now I don't end at 2 pi, I end at 2 pi thirds, okay? Which, what is 2 pi thirds? Well, thinking back to our unit circle, okay, that's what we got to think of. So think of it this way. If we could eliminate all these points from 0 to pi and cut that into thirds, okay? So if we cut that into thirds, it would look something like that, maybe. Okay. So we have two of those. So I'm ending right here. Okay. So it's really small, isn't it? Okay. In between, so our midline was still at the zero. So we went above 1, now halfway in between that, we're going to go below 1, right? And then halfway in between these two points, so right about here, we're at the midline. 
halfway between these two points, so about here, we're at the midline. So it looks something like this. Okay. And it would just keep doing that, wouldn't it? So that one was kind of a tough one, wasn't it? Because of those differences. Okay, now let's take a look at 24. So the sign of the parent graph, 0, 0, pi halves is up to 1, pi back to 0, 3 pi halves down to negative 1, 2 pi back to 0. Okay. Now our amplitude is still 1. Our k is still 0. So I know that these three points are going to remain on this line. Okay, but what about our period? What is that? Well, b is 4, so I go 2 pi divided by 4, which simplifies to pi over 2, so pi halves. So, from beginning to start, I'm going to be in between that pi halves. So, I start at the same place, I end at pi halves, and remember, start and end halfway in between, we're still on the midline. So pi fourths, I'm on the midline. Then, between these two, we're going to go up one, and between the last two, we go down one. So I just kind of guess in between, up one, down one, and there it is. So every pi halves, we're going to do the same thing. Okay, so it's going to look something like this, if we were to keep drawing it. That periodic function just keeps repeating, right? That would look like that. All right. Now we've got to deal with everything happening, okay? And let's think about it. Here's another good way to think through it, okay? So, our parent graph, right? So for sine, start at 0, 0. A pi, we're at 0. 2 pi, we're at 0. Pi halves, we're up to 1. 3 pi halves, we're down to negative 1. Right? So, if we're thinking about our table, and actually let's scoot that more in the middle, we've got 0, pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. And we go 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Alright, that's our parent function. Now, our amplitude is 2. Our midline shift is positive 1, and b is 4, so our period is 2 pi over 4, right? 2 pi over 4, which is pi halves. Okay, so it's going to be another skinny one, right? So, pi halves. So, what that means is, this still is 0. This now becomes pi halves. Well, what's just like this was in between 2 pi. So that's going to be in between. What's in between in between 0 and pi halves? 0 and 90 is 45. So it's pi fourths. Okay? Well, what would be in between pi fourths? Okay? That would be pi eighths, which we usually don't. I think of it just visually. This one would be uh, 3 pi, or no, 3 pi 8s, maybe? It'd have to be an 8, wouldn't it? And so we'd go, oh crap, I'm almost out of time. It would be 3 pi 8s. Now we're going to have to look, so we've got the, we know what the x values are, but now how are the y's going to change? Well, for these ones, they normally are on that midline. The midline is moving up one, so we just add one to that. And then the amplitude is two, so we would just essentially, you know, times it by two. So we'd end up with negative two, negative two, and then one, one, one. So then we just graph it. So our starting point is up here at one, our ending point pi halves, the halfway point, and then up two more and down two more, so I guess not timesing, more adding, or subtracting, 
Same idea. So there we go with that one, and I will finish the other one on a second video. So there we go, guys.